One clear night in the midst of the 19th century, Edouard Roche and his friend used a telescope to gaze at Saturn as bright as it could be. Stimulated by the awesome view of the planet, Roche asked his friend, Hmm, what do you think formed those rings of Saturn? Ha, huh, what a silly question. That's like asking, how was the Earth created? Of course, God created it. But when Roche returned home, he knew that the answer was much more complicated. What really caused the rings of Saturn? Maybe it's not as simple as it seems. Consider Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Like all celestial bodies, it's held together by its own gravitational strength, sort of like how a brownie is held together by its stickiness. Now, aside from its own gravity, what other forces are acting on the moon? Well, one significant force comes from the planet it's orbiting, Saturn. Saturn exerts a massive gravitational pull on Titan, but there's something more important to notice here. The side of Titan that is facing Saturn feels a much larger gravitational pull from Saturn than the other side, since it's obviously much closer. This difference in the strength of the gravitational pulls across a celestial body causes a special effect known as tidal forces. Sounds familiar? Yes, tidal forces are also responsible for the daily high tides and low tides we observe here on Earth. The side of the Earth facing the Moon feels a stronger gravitational pull from the Moon than the other side, hence creating a bulge on the oceans, which we experience as tides. Now, going back to Titan, we can label the main influencing forces, namely its own gravitational force on itself and the pull from Saturn, which is different in strength across the two opposite sides of Titan. So the question is, what would happen if Titan got closer and closer to Saturn? Well, as no surprise, the gravitational integrity of the moon would stay the same, but clearly, the tidal forces will get stronger and stronger. Surely, if Titan keeps moving towards Saturn, shouldn't there be a point where the tidal forces become so significantly large that they completely overwhelm the gravitational integrity of Titan itself? The answer to that strange question is surprisingly yes. And the exact point where the tidal forces from not just Saturn, but any planet, becomes larger than the gravitational integrity of its moon is known as the Roche limit. So if a moon were to exceed the Roche limit, it would completely disintegrate and break apart as tidal forces become significantly strong and rip it apart. Now there's actually a formula for the Roche limit, which is given by this. Isn't it just amazing? One simple formula to approximate the theoretical distance from the center of a planet where its moons would disintegrate and break apart if they were to cross the line. Now you may be thinking, what exactly does this formula indicate? Very simply, r is the radius of the primary planet and the two rows are the density of the planet and the moon respectively, which actually makes sense because the more firmly held together the moon is, the harder it will be for it to break apart by the same tidal force. When Roche formulated this epic limit, he could explain one of the most fascinating observations and discovery that humans have ever made, Saturn's rings. Many people subscribe to the hypothesis that the formation of Saturn's rings are due to small rocky and icy bodies which were captured into the planet's gravitational field from the formation of the solar system and Saturn itself. However, Roche developed an explanation that is far more likely to have happened. In other words, a couple 10 million years ago, small icy and rocky moons happened to move too close to Saturn, past its Roche limit, where tidal forces became exceedingly large to disintegrate the moons and thus form these clusters of beautiful rings we see today. In fact, this is precisely why many of the other planets have either very faint rings or have no rings at all simply because there hasn't been a lot of large meteoroids or moons which have exceeded the Roche limit of these planets. As a scale of reference, the Roche limit between the Earth and the Moon is just under 10,000 kilometers, which means that if the Moon were to swing around Earth almost 40 times closer than it does today, the Moon as we know it would not exist. Instead, it would most likely be broken up and form a ring around our planet. 
When talking about the Roche limit, Saturn is definitely the best example in our solar system. So next time when you see a picture of Saturn and its famous rings, you'll know that the place where the ring ends is precisely where the Roche limit is located, and that the rings formed because tens of millions of years ago, large meteoroids and moons surpassed the Roche limit of Saturn, hence creating the beautiful and world-known rings we see today. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, perhaps you'd like some of my others. Feel free to check them out at Andromeda Official Channel. And as always, what did you think about the Roche Limit? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and let's see where that takes us. So with that said, thanks for watching.